Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Nazia Iqbal. It's the 14th of December 2023 and here are the questions we will be answering today. Can Dixon become India's Foxconn? Who are the new chief ministers? How will elections in India, US affect markets in 2024? And what does Dunkey mean? India's Dixon Technologies will soon start rolling out Lenovo laptops and notebooks from its Noida factory under PLI 2.0 scheme. Its subsidiary, Paget Electronics, was awarded a manufacturing contract by the Chinese company. Just a few months ago, Dixon had won a contract from Xiaomi to manufacture mobile phones. Dixon clearly is on a roll. So what is behind its success? Tariq Ahmed finds out. Sunil Vachani started Dixon Technology in 1993 to manufacture TV sets. Vachani borrowed 20 lakh rupees from his father to set up the company. Now the company makes smartphones, washing machines, security surveillance systems and TVs for a range of clients including Samsung, LG and Xiaomi. Dixon Technologies' wholly owned subsidiary, Paget Electronics Private Limited, secured a manufacturing contract from Lenovo for IT hardware products, laptops and notebooks under the Production Linked Incentive 2.0 scheme. On 30th November, Paget Electronics commenced smartphone manufacturing for Xiaomi at its new facility in Noida district of Uttar Pradesh. The plant has an annual capacity of 25 million units. So, can Dixon Technologies become India's Foxconn? These are technical uh, wins, right? The That I told you, there will be a few Indian champions in the EMS ODM space. Dixon is a front runner, but the Indian champion companies will, uh, you know, will scale up over the next 10 years to the level of what you said, the Foxcons and the Flexes and so on. So there is a, there is, they, they will create a niche, a very large niche for themselves. The story of Dixon Technology actually traces its roots to Sunil Vajani's father, Sundar Vajani, who started Western Electronics in 1967. It made color TVs that were exported to the Soviet Union. Post the Soviet Union's collapse in 1993, Western Electronics faced challenges. That's when Sunil Vajani founded Dixon Technologies that focused on manufacturing electronics for other companies. Starting with color TVs in 1993, the company diversified to LCD TVs in 2007, CFL bulbs in 2008, washing machines in 2010, and entered mobile phone manufacturing in 2016. Dixon Technologies expanded its portfolio to include refrigerators, CCTV systems, set-top boxes, and recently ventured into laptops and notepads through a contract with Lenovo. Dixon has enjoyed a very strong growth momentum in the recent past, um, driven by an array of uh, strategic partnerships, a conducive policy environment, a very clear focus on IP and value creation, um, and a very strong sense of diversification across the board. Um, as we move forward, uh, there are tailwinds that are supporting them in this growth and Dixon will continue to enjoy this recent success that they have seen. Uh, if you were to look at the overall dynamics at play, uh, there is a strong diversification happening across the board. Uh, Make in India is gaining momentum with more and more players looking to diversify their supply chains and look at India as a potential exports hub. The Dixon Technologies currently have 21 manufacturing plants and three R&D centers across India with more than 2,700 employees. The company has six subsidiaries and is part three joint ventures. Dixon Technology currently has a market capitalization of 17,043 crore rupees. 
In FY23, the company had a revenue of 12,197 crore rupees. Most of the revenue, 43% of Dixon Technologies in FY23 came from mobile manufacturing. The manufacturing of consumer electronics products like TVs is the second largest source of revenue with a 35% contribution. Listed in 2017, the company's shares surged, notably after securing the Lenovo contract. After a 29% decline in calendar year 22, they rebound impressively in CY23, rallying 68% to 6,605 rupees per share this week. This marks a 159% increase from their one-year low of 2,553 rupees. Experts say the success of Dixon has to be viewed with India's efforts to make it big in electronics. India has ambitious plans in electronic manufacturing and Union Budget 2023-24 earmarked 8,083 crore rupees for the PLI scheme for large-scale electronic manufacturing. Dixon's subsidiary Paget Electronics was the first company to receive incentives under this category of PLI scheme. At the moment, there are interventions to give policy support through the PLIs where we recognize our disabilities as a nation. And that has helped companies like Dixon to ramp up, right? But the glorious success which I'm talking about, that India takes a place in the sun, and, you know, Dixon also participates in that, will depend on how the nation gets its act together. Today, nations compete with nations, and companies are a part of that success. Securing big contracts from giants like LG, Philips, Xiaomi, and now Lenovo has been driving the success of Dixon. The company has also won big government contracts in the past. For instance, in 2012, it secured the Tamil Nadu state government's tender for 14-inch televisions and won a contract for making 9 lakh TV sets. Leveraging PLI incentives has also contributed significantly to the company's growth. Experts say Dixon's success serves as an example for other Indian companies to emulate. Clearly, it is good news for the government too, as the PLR scheme has got a shot in the arm. Meanwhile, the ruling party too got a shot in the arm in the recently concluded assembly elections. It got three out of five states which went to the polls. And all the five states have new chief minister faces. While BJP again pulling a surprise by picking three leaders from obscurity to lead states, it has won. But who are these new chief ministers? Ayush Mishra offers a peek into their profiles. Third of December 2023 was Sunday and most people were glued to screens. No, it wasn't a cricket match, but no less exciting than that. Results of elections in four states were being announced. By afternoon, it became clear that the BJP had pulled a surprise by clinching Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh from Congress and by retaining Madhya Pradesh. Telangana gave Congress a breather, while Mizoram, whose results were announced a day later, chose the Zoram People's Movement, or ZPM. The BJP, meanwhile, continued to deliver surprises in the next few days. In the three states it won, the Saffron Party selected candidates from obscurity and made them chief ministers, something it had done before also. Like in Haryana, it had appointed ML Khattar. Chief Ministers of Telangana and Mizoram also came as a surprise. Let's take a brief look at these new faces who will steer five states for the next five years. 58-year-old Mohan Yadav, who represents Ujjain South as an MLA, is the new Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh. Having served as a minister in the Shivraj Singh Chauhan cabinet, he initially became an MLA from the same constituency in 2013. 
he secured victories in the subsequent assembly elections of 2018 and 2023. Mohan Yadav holds multiple academic qualifications, including BSc, LLB, MA, MBA, and a PhD. Yadav is also known for his sword fighting skills. In Madhya Pradesh, BJP has picked Mohan Yadav as its chief minister. We need to remember that since 2003, all of the BJP's chief ministers in that state have been OBCs, whether Uma Bharti or Babulal Gaur or more recently Shivrat Chauhan and now Mohan Yadav. Mohan Yadav has deep roots in the Sangh Parivar and it's also a message by the BJP to the Yadav community in UP and Bihar that the party has their interest at its heart. First time MLA Bhajan Lal Sharma is the BJP's pick for chief ministerial post in Rajasthan. An MLA from Sanganer constituency, Sharma is known for his proximity to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak, Sangh and BJP chief JP Nadda. He previously held the position of State General Secretary for four times before entering the legislative role. He had participated in ABVP's Kashmir March and also went to jail during Ram Temple movement. In Rajasthan, BJP has picked Bhajanlal Sharma, a Brahmin, as the chief minister. For long years, BJP was known as the Brahmin Baniya Party. However, after the advent of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Brahmins have been missing among the top leadership of the BJP. The BJP has tried to redress that by appointing Bhajanlal Sharma as the chief minister in Rajasthan. It has also appointed two Brahmins as deputy CMs one in Ch Chhattisgarh and another in Madhya Pradesh. In Mizoram, the Zoram People's Movement, a coalition of six regional parties, clinched 27 out of 40 seats. ZPM leader Lal Duhoma was sworn in as the new chief minister of Mizoram. For over 35 years, Congress and the Mizo National Front had ruled the state alternatively. Lal Duhoma finally broke this trend. He has an interesting profile. Due to his impressive tenure in Goa, he was given charge of the security for former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1982. Lal Homa later left the job and joined Congress, which made him State Chief of Mizoram in May 1984. He became an MP about seven months later. Lal Homa was also sent to London to broker peace with the then extremist group MNF which later became a political party after the Mizo Peace Accord of 1986. But after Gandhi's assassination, Lal Duhoma fell out with the Congress and withdrew his membership from the party in 1986. It was seen as a violation of the anti-defection law of 1985. He became the country's first MP to be disqualified under the law two years later. It's for the first time since the 1980s that a party other than the Congress and the Mizo National Front has been voted to power. People saw hope in Lal Duhoma's promise of ushering in a new system of administration. Congress appointed its Telangana State Unit Chief Anumula Revanth Reti as the new Chief Minister of the state. Over the course of his political career, he has been elected as an MLA three times, twice representing the Telugu Desam Party and once as a member of the Congress, a party he joined in 2017. In 2021, he assumed the role of Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee President, taking over from N. Uttam Kumar Reddy. Reddy has spent time in Telugu Desam Party, also in the Bharat Rashtra Samiti, and subsequently joined the Congress. In recent years, Reddy emerged as a bitter critic of K. Chandrasekhar Rao and his government and helped galvanize the Congress rank and file. The BJP appointed Vishnu Deo Sai, a party veteran and former union minister, as the chief minister of Chhattisgarh. He is the first tribal leader to hold the post. His grandfather, the late Bhutnath Sai, was an MLA from 1947 to 1952. Between 1999 and 2014, Deo won four consecutive Lok Sabha elections from the Raigarh constituency in 1999, 2004, 2009 and 2014. Sai has also been a member of the BJP National Working Committee. In Chhattisgarh, BJP has picked a tribal Vishnu Dev Sai 
as its chief minister. It's an acknowledgement that tribals voted for the BJP in greater numbers than they voted for the Congress in the recently concluded assembly polls. Sai has deep roots in the Sangh Parivar. With the opposition trying to resurrect caste-based politics, BJP has tried to strike a balance. In the three states, it has won. In Rajasthan, it has chosen a Brahmin as CM. In Chhattisgarh, it's a tribal and an OBC in Madhya Pradesh. All the three BJP CMs are under 60 and they have started their political journey from ABVP. Lal Dhoma, meanwhile, is 74 and Reddy, 56. Clearly, being the first-time chief ministers, they have their task cut out for them. Elections also give a fillip to stock markets. Historically, the market has favoured continuity and a majority government, as this implies limited policy shifts post-elections. As India and the US, the world's two major economies, prepare to go to polls in 2024, how will the outcomes affect market moves and policies? Nikita Vashisht and Puneet Wadwa explore. Calendar year 2024 could bring about significant volatility in the markets, as more than 70 countries will go to polls next year. Among these, two of the world's biggest economies, India and the US, will also choose their leaderships. In India, markets expect the BJP to return to office, ensuring policy continuity and supporting the positive momentum in the markets. The policy from the government is uh, mostly uh, is already in place. Right? So the, the budget, last uh, pre-election budget has, has already been announced. Uh, there can be, I mean, just the next one is a vote on account and I think I saw in your paper only uh, the finance minister's report that it will be a very routine vote and account budget. So, uh, I don't expect policies to shift really. However, the key to watch in the 2024 general elections is if the opposition alliance, India, can put up a credible seat-sharing arrangement. In our base case, we expect the market to trade higher in the run-up to the 2024 polls. However, if the results go against the market's preferred outcome, we see the possibility of a drawdown of 30%, said analysts at Morgan Stanley. Previously, the Indian benchmark indices rallied three months prior to the election result day in four of the past five instances, whereas they fell three months hence in two of the five instances. That said, analysts warn that a leadership change in the US may trigger volatility across global markets. According to V.K. Vijay Kumar of Geojit Financial Services, if Donald Trump wins in the US, higher tariffs on imports can strain US-China relations. Besides, Trump also described India as a tariff king and therefore may not be India-friendly in trade. Thus, tax rejig, movement in US bond yields, the US's stance on Israel, and or Ukraine war and management of any potential recession will be tracked by the markets. On the bourses, Wall Street gave muted returns three months prior to the election outcome day during the past five instances. The indices, however, have rallied between 5 and 22 percent three months after the result day during four of the past five election years. In a nutshell, while markets expect the domestic political setup to be supportive of an up move, the US presidential elections hold key for the sustainability of the rally. Today, on 14th December, investors will react to the US Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision and track wholesale inflation for November back home. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business standard. The U.S. presidential elections are scheduled for November 5th, 2024. But going by the latest polling data, Joe Biden has the lowest approval rating of any of his predecessors. Meanwhile, over 96,000 Indians were arrested while crossing illegally into the U.S. between October 2022 and September this year. It's an all-time high number. In parts of India, this practice is called donkey. It's also the subject of a movie starring Shah Rukh Khan, which is slated for release this month. Vasudha Mukherjee has more on this peculiar term.
राजकुमार हिरानी डंकी स्टारिंग शाहरुख खान तापसी पन्नू विकी कौशल एंड बमन ईरानी विल हिट सिनेमास ऑन डिसम्बर अहेड ऑफ क्रिसमस सेलिब्रेशन शाहरुख खान हैज डिस्क्राइब द स्टोरी एज अ जर्नी दैट विल टेक यू थ्रू अ मैड कैप राइड ऑफ फ्रेंडशिप द कॉमेडी एंड ट्रेजिडी दैट लाइफ इज एंड अ नोस्टैलजिया फॉर होम एंड फैमिली हाउ एवर मेनी मे नॉट नो दैट द पंजाबी वर्ड डंकी और डोंकी फाइट actually refers to an illegal method used to enter into countries like the United States, Canada and the United Kingdom. Donkey is a Punjabi idiom that means to hop from place to place. It is a colloquial term for donkey fights or the donkey fight method, which is a dangerous illegal immigration technique involving crossing a country's borders through a backdoor route after multiple stops in other countries. Illegal immigration has given rise to an industry driven by agents who charge exorbitant fees to help smuggle people to the country of their choice. Agents can offer various services from fake papers to help through otherwise legal migration processes to smuggling people through ship containers. For illegal immigration people mostly apply for a tourist visa for European Union Schengen countries where they can move freely between 26 bordering nations after reaching the EU zone agents help illegal entry into the UK by issuing fake documents or hiding people in trunks of vehicles crossing borders While donkey fight can be used to enter any country the US Canada and the UK are some of the most popular destinations undertaken by Indian immigrants according to the US Customs and Border Protection Indians are the fifth largest source of illegal migrants entering the US from the southwest border Donkey comes with tremendous risks including the risk of capture, imprisonment and deportation. When facilitated by an agent, the system is highly exploitative. Many sell off their assets including ancestral land to pay these agents. Agents often withhold people's passports or other important documents to extort more money and assets. These migrants are also more vulnerable to becoming victims of other crimes during the smuggling process. The donkey method seems to be the most popular method of illegal immigration in Punjab where the term also originates from. However, it has also expanded to Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat. As SRK's latest release may depict, people are driven by the promise of a better life that includes higher incomes, more job opportunities. trusted bank sbi the banker SBI. to every indian also the number of indians being caught at the us borders has jumped fivefold in the last few years well that's all we have for you today for more news and analysis please log on to business-standard.com thank you for watching If you like this video share it and subscribe to Business Standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on YouTube Twitter Facebook Instagram Telegram and LinkedIn